this edition of Hillbilly DVD Reviews. Hey, America, what's going on? We're Hillbillies and we're reviewing movies. Woo woo! Today we're going to take a look at the mid 2000s, very influential fucking action movie that's still copied to this fucking goddamn oh, day. Man. Usually being by the same writer. We're talking about the movie Training Day! Training Day! Denzel and Ethan Hawk. Badass movie, man. This was one of the finest movies I've ever seen in my life. Talk about bad cop to the extreme, man. It was awesome. It took me a while to see it, too. I don't think I saw it like a couple years ago, maybe, but uh, when I finally did, man, it, it still lived up, it lived up to the hype 100%. This man. is a movie where the studios kind of flipped the script and was like, you can be in a hardcore R rated action movie, but it can be dramatic and you can get nominated for awards and mm -hmm. shit, man. Denzel Washington playing the ultimate Denzel Washington role, how he does fucking walking around, fucking wiping his nose, fucking pumping his chest out like he does. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and this ain't the first bad cop movie, but what was what was a revolutionary about it was it was Denzel's first role as a bad guy. Yeah, pe pe like he before this he was doing movies where he played a preacher with Whitney. Yeah, I mean, like shit. every 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 freaking woman, no matter what race, creed, or color, was salivating over Denzel. I know because he was always hot and he was always the good guy. You know, everybody wanted. But now this time, this motherfucker smoking crack behind smoking the way. <laughs> Shooting he's, people, he's doing he's all kinds of shit, setting his partner up. He's so, a evil what's motherfucker. the basic setup? Basic setup is fucking Ethan Hawke plays a young cop, fucking first day on the big time force in LA and Man. shit, ready to shit his pants. He gets teamed up with Denzel Washington's fucking badass. Carry dude carries two guns underneath his armpits yeah. and shit. So so fucking charismatic too, so jovial and like, hey man, I've been on the force for years and you know, trust me, trust me. The vast majority of it, they spend riding around in a fucking car and shit, smoking drugs and shit. Fucking Denzel convinces uh, Ethan Hawke he has to experience drugs, so he makes him smoke some fucking crack and some <laughs> methamphetamine and bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Next thing you know, they're pulling over like little fuckers stealing their drugs, not even making real bust. Ethan Hawke's like, oh my god, like I guess this is what you gotta do to be a big city cop and yeah, all that man, shit. Yeah, man, I wonder, there was like that fucking scene where Ethan Hawke like, almost got his ass beat or whatever. Yeah, and, yeah. Like, Denzel just let him. You, you handle it, man. You're a cop now. You handle it, rookie. There, yeah, there's okay. a fucking girl getting raped by some crackheads in an alley. Den you know, Denzel was like, fuck it, let her get raped. Let Run a train, yeah, I don't care. Yeah. There ain't no money in it for me. But Ethan Hawke jumps out and he saves her, and then it pays off later that the you know favor gets returned. And, you know the girl has some cousins and shit. Foreshadowing, exactly. Plot the, device. The, it, like the, what's funny is when this movie came out, people were like, "This really seems like an independent movie. It's all random and shit." The first half of the movie is just random drive around bullshit. Yeah, and the second yeah. half of the movie, the plot comes together and everything pays off. Right, like right. I think a little bit too neatly because like, <laughs> what are some of the chances that all this shit's going to come? Yeah, I mean, if, if, full if, circle if, within a twenty-four hour period. Well, I'm saying no, it wasn't an independent movie because yeah. it was a little like everything like a fucking night, nicely wrapped with a bow on it. Yeah, exactly. yeah. There's a bizarre scene where uh, Ethan Hawke is sitting around a table with some fucking cholos and they start talking about how they like to uh, ram some ass in prison and shit. I don't know. That, yeah, that, that was the only scene where it was like, and, and like, not just that they're talking about ramming some ass in prison, but like, these motherfuckers get into it. Remember that one guy? He's just like, you ever have your shit pushing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like he's fucking reliving the moment exactly. having a shit exactly. pushed in or pushing <laughs> someone else's shit in or whatever. I, love that. whatever. I, don't, I don't know, man. But doing that. So basically, without giving too much away on the plot, is shit comes full circle. There's a big caper trying to fucking steal some fucking money from some fucker who was crooked in the past. Ethan Hawke being the new guy on the crew and shit with these little ring of crooked cops, man. They try to put him as the fall guy, but it turns out he ain't that big of a fucking pussy the way they thought he was. And he comes back and he flips it on Denzel. You know, Denzel in a way gets his comeuppance and all that shit because he owes all this money to people and shit. Won't tell you how, buddy, but it's good to show. Like, it's a good dramatic scene. It's a good scene, and and, and also it's a good character. You know, showing that Ethan Hawke's character, that he, he does have a breaking point. There's only so much. Like, you need exactly. to break him, or he'll fucking rise to the occasion to step up and be like, you know what, I don't, don't fuck with me, man. I played high school football. Not necessarily that this makes the movie any less good, but I think it kind of lessens its effect. The the Not the director, but the writer of this movie, David Ayers, he went on to write other movies. He ended up being the director himself. But he just milks this being in a car shit. <laughs> like, non fucking suck. He went on to do the movie Harsh Times, Fuckers in the Car All Day. He did fucking just did the movie with Jake Gyllenhaal and Michael Pena. Yeah, in the watch. In the watch. Driving the car, driving the car. 
the movie Street Kings had a lot of driving in the car bullshit going on, so driving in the car, whatever, which, you know, not that this movie is any shittier for it, but it, when you watch this movie now, ten years later, whatever, it kind of is not as special. Because it's like a staple of what you're exactly, going for exactly. now. So what are you going to rate that shit, yo? So on a rating scale, one to ten, this movie being some good high drama, some good, you know, dirty cops, dirty crooks, shit pulling off well. I liked it, but it's not like it reinvented the wheel and shit, but I'm still going to give it a 7 out of 10. Yeah, man, I'm actually going to give it a 7. I agree with you. It, 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 it's definitely better than average. I watched it again. I endorse it, but it just doesn't quite go above 7 for me. Exactly. Like, like back in the day, motherfuckers, like, fuck, you still see commercials for new <laughs> movies from the writer or director or training. Like, people were blowing, people thought this was a, I don't know if you remember, people thought this was an Academy Award winning movie yeah, and man. shit. Well, well which, Denzel won the Oscar for it. Yeah, actually. I mean, but, so, people, but, but, but come on. They, they, but they, <laughs> they thought there was going to be one of those timeless movies where, like, every year you celebrate, like, a fucking 20th anniversary, 10th yeah. anniversary. You know, greatest movie of all time. And, you know, it's great, but it's not like, you know, fucking the greatest movie of all time. Exactly. You know exactly. what I mean? Picture and sound. On oh, technical level, picture and sound. Now, the, the shooting style of this movie was also influential on movies coming out. It has that real high contrast, real warm, like really vibrant fucking colors and shit. Yeah. Looks good and shit. Unfortunately, this being a fucking Blu-ray from the very beginning of Blu-ray, whatever... Like, you know, like, whatever. It's not as good as the newest shit, but, it, you know, like, basically, I think Michael Bay <laughs> rips off the look a little bit for his <laughs> bullshit Transformer movies. So it's kind of in that realm of Michael Bay, like, eye candy bullshit. But being an older movie, you know, they did a good job for the time, but if they remastered this or did a new special edition, I think it would and, look better. Yeah, and they probably should do that. And, and I can see them doing that eventually. Fucking... I won't say the shit to bled, but, th like I said, showing the age on this disc, the audio, Dolby Digital Plus... Now that's higher than DVD, but that's not on the standard Dolby True HD. DSM. It's not so, as high as you can get from Yeah, right. so you, you can know? tell they Come rushed on. this shit out and was just trying to get shit out, but whatever. So, picture and sound looking good, but a new 10th anniversary edition will probably look better. I gotta be honest with you, picture and sound, I'm only gonna go fucking 7 out of 10. I'll probably just give it a 6, I don't give a fuck. I mean, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean <laughs> it is old as fuck. 2006, yeah. what year did Blu ray come out? 2006. Like, that, right, that's exactly. It. This exactly. Is, is the beginning of the format and shit. All right, special features. We got the commentary by director Antoine Fuqua. We got some additional scenes. We got an alternate ending. We got HBO First Look, Making Train Day. We got two music videos. Nelly's number one, A Fair Amongst. Got you. We got their actual trailer. All right, first of all, alternate ending. Like, I think that's the one a lot of people going to jump on. It's bullshit, dude. It's basically the ending in the movie. Just like some different camera angle, like the same shit happens. It's just set up. You know what I mean? Like the dialogue is a little. Well, I, I'm to, not, to yeah, me, that's not an alternate ending. Dude, I'm, I'm never a fan of that shit anyway. Yeah. It's like, dude, fucking, what's the ending? Give me the ending. Don't give me this alternate reality and universe fucking deal. There's only one ending to every story. All right, including this story. That's just me. I'm kind of a fucking music video videos, way. whatever theatrical trailer. Where I mean, that's good to have. They they didn't, you know, like fuck you. But uh, who cares? The only good thing I'm gonna really say is commentary by director yeah, Antoine yeah. Fuqua. He always breaks down how you know the philosophy is movies, working with the actors. He's always real good on his commentary tracks. He so whatever. To me, that's the highlight. It, it's the only highlight. And yeah. You know, you mentioned music videos. I mean, it's it's not fucking shit that's unique to this disc, man. You can see those fucking videos anywhere. You can probably check them out. Exactly. You see them. I mean, I mean, look. Yeah. It, but not only, but they're on the fucking disc looking all DVD yeah, quality yeah, no shit. shit. I mean, you, you could put fucking 10 goddamn commercials for Tide with Bleach as a special feature. Exactly. But it's not fucking it's special. Just, it's we're, just, we're, just we're, cramming We're not going to up the score for yeah, that shit. So. It's just filler, man. It's so, filler. Yeah, so. it's special features being some filler and shit. Sorry, I'm only going to give this special feature six and a half out of ten. Five. Just because right. I've gone a trend of going one below you. All right, so we'll go. So that's it for Training Day, man. Fucking good movie, quality movie. You know, if you've never seen it before, unfortunately, it's kind of be marred by all these kind of rip-offs of it and shit, you know? Yeah, but if, if you haven't seen it, try to just, like, don't don't think that it's going to live up to the hype, because it probably won't, but just, you know, enjoy it. Plus, it has an early role of Eva Mendes being a skanky fucking whore just sits in an apartment all day long waiting to get fucked by Denzel Washington. So, when, when doesn't yeah, she play that? It, well, that, that is true. She always know. plays a gum, cum dancer. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Dawson's gonna kick our ass for this. Hold no, on. they broke up. Broke up. Oh, poor. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>